Wow. I tell you what, we're back and we are live. You are listening to Beyond Sight and Sound, Metal Detecting and Treasure Hunting Radio for you, the always valued and appreciated listener. And we definitely appreciate everyone hanging in there with us tonight. We had uh, a big whammy there at the beginning. We're not sure what happened. Apologies, but seriously thanks for hanging in there folks and i'll tell you what with tonight the pirate theme music and everything i sure wish i had my cutlass layton <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know uh thanks again and i want to just reiterate thanks for all the people that stayed tuned i know we really publicized the heck out of this over facebook this uh this past week and uh i know you will all be truly entertained with our guest this evening Yes, I do believe so. And speaking of our guest, man, I'll tell you what, people have seen it all over Facebook, I know, because we plastered that thing everywhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, well, you know, I have to say, um, uh, without this guy that is about to speak, uh, he is one of my uh, mentors, something that uh, over the years I've read uh, an awful lot about this gentleman, and uh, I can't say enough kind words about this guy. So if you could do the honors, Josh, introduce him. Let's get right into it. Whoo, man, I get quite the prestige tonight being able to do that. I'm telling you, people, you've seen the promo in places, you've seen some descriptions, you've probably seen uh, different video drops, uh, other descriptions that went along with the posts that people were sharing, which thanks to everyone for sharing the post. But when it comes to our guest, I mean, he is truly... A legend in his own time. He's a living legend. He's worked hundreds of shipwrecks, world renowned and known the world over for his accomplishments and achievements. And I mean, when it comes to treasure recovery, I mean, this is the guy you hear about. He's out there doing it everywhere and such an absolute great guy to talk to so let's get him in here too tonight's guest is captain carl fismer how is it going carl oh uh, actually carl left he sent me in to finish the show off tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. can't say that i blame him buddy yeah I I think your technical difficulties must have come from all them dirty words we're using before the show started. It <laughs> melted your circuits, I think. Yeah, either that or there were just so many people wanting to listen, they crashed the broadcaster. Who knows? Uh, well, uh, you know, I, believe me, I've run into lots of electronic problems myself, but most of them have been when I've got a lot of money at stake and we're out on some godforsaken reef somewhere, and then... I, in fact, I was telling Leighton, I had seven brand new metal detectors on the conception site. I'm, I'm 600 miles into the middle of nowhere, and all seven of them crapped out. Yeah, I won't God. say the brand name because I don't want any right. lawsuits at this time, but seven brand new pulse induction metal detectors. And the only one that was working was my good old Harding metal detector. That Harding metal detector is 36 years old today, and it's still kicking butt. Yeah, I was going to say, still recovering treasure for you. Yes, it does. I, that was the best investment I ever made. I got it back in 1980 from Lee Harding, one of the greatest people in our business that you probably never heard about. And uh, he was a, a radar technician for Eastern Airlines. There's some history for you. And right. he, he started building his own pulse units. Um, and, but he put them inside of a, a piece of diesel exhaust. You could drive a fence post with them. You didn't have to worry about anything breaking or damaged. And here it is. I paid $4,000 cash for it. And, and you think, wow. And I thought, wow, too, because I didn't have no money. Well, yeah. And, and uh, that was quite a chunk of money then. Yeah, 
and first time I jumped in the water with it, I got 175 eights and fours. Oh my goodness! Well, you paid for your machine. Well, yeah, right I was going to say, path. see, it goes to show you. It so, goes to show you. You make that one good find, your purchase was worthwhile. Right. Now, I ran back to Lee's house and kissed him, but that's not <laughs> publication. <laughs> <laughs> but it's documented now. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, if we lost any time on this, you know, I, I'll come back anytime you guys want. And oh, wow. I can always talk about treasure. Right, Let's... right, yeah, exactly, and uh, we certainly appreciate that. The bottle of rum's in the mail. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, the, the last <coughs> one was empty. Well, <laughs> but the, yeah. the bottle was nice, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to have a problem with that myself from time to time. They just, I don't know where it goes, it just runs dry. <laughs> I know what you're saying. And speaking of talking, uh, we want to hear from as many people as we can tonight. Uh, the show number is 419-549-5744. Again, that's 419-549-5744. Folks, don't be shy. Call in. Talk with Fizz. If you got some questions for him, he'd love to answer them. In the meantime, we'll just continue rambling on. And uh, this guy is full of stories and uh, knowledge. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we can talk for hours with this gentleman. Absolutely. And oh. uh, another thing, too, something new for the listeners We've been meaning to announce it in the past, and we'll start with that this year. For those of you who may not have a, a calling plan, a long-distance package, you can download Skype. It's a free download. Search Skype for Beyond Sight and Sound and hit the call button while we're live, and you're there. And we've got a caller already. Go ahead, caller. Wow, right away? Right, right away. away. That's uh, that's wait, service. Wait, wait, that's great. Yeah, I just, uh, I just, I'm very sad that I got through. Is um, Captain Cowley? I'm right here. Captain Cow. Yes. yes. Wow, it's this huge pleasure just to say hi to you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I just, oh, I just like lost it for words. It's just well, spectacular. Do you have any secret treasure locations you can email to me? <laughs> yeah, there you go. We we accept PMs on Facebook too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, uh, did you um, have a question for Carl? Go ahead. Uh, how how could I join your crew? I'd like to join your crew and then get out there and, and find the treasure. Well. Uh, I've just had my first book published, so if you buy a copy, I'll give you a job. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you can't beat that. I'll make yeah, sure to no, get I, my check uh, in the mail. If, if you want to email me, uh, you know, like one page of uh, of your resume and stuff, I'll hang on to it. In fact, I'll answer it. Uh, I'm, sometimes we take new people, and sometimes we just don't. I've been working with the same crew basically for about the last 30 years but once in a while we do take somebody on awesome nice yeah well there you or go there's you your answer you can yep. message me on facebook uh well um i'm doing everything by phone right now yeah i get in my facebook and i do everything by with my phone so it's kind of difficult but if i get to a computer i'm sure i can find one now yeah i i would love to do that Awesome. Well, yeah, send me a little resume, one sheet, not not a whole big thing like them archaeologists have 89 pages oh. if you fall asleep on the first one. Mm -hmm. All right. Make it simple and sweet. Yeah. Right. Please. Exactly. Short, sweet, and to the point. Yeah. Right. My right. email, my email is Captain, C-A-P-T-A-I-N, Fizz, F-I-Z-Z, -Z, like you shake up a bottle. At yeah, okay. okay. Awesome. And speaking of your book, oh, Captain yeah. Carl Fizz, uh, no. why don't we go a little bit into that, and uh, maybe we can uh, possibly get some uh, 
some people to respond to that. Tell us what it's uh, what it's entailed and uh, what the name of it is and uh, how it all became about. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I've, I've been threatening to do to write a book for 30 years, but uh, and you know I've written a lot of magazine articles and I got a lot of good feedback on it. So many people say, you know something, Fizz, it's when I was reading that story you wrote about the conception, I thought you were just sitting right across the table from me and telling me that story. I write that way intentionally. But uh, when you're doing a book, that is a whole career change. Uh, Sam Milner, my good friend, and I have been working on that thing for over a year, but it's in the publishers now. I'll have my first big order in three weeks, and it's it's called Uncharted Waters, the life and times of Captain Fizz. The, the name was selected because, you know, I was in Cincinnati and northern Kentucky most of my life, and then one day I'm down here in Florida with uh, two kids, and you talk about uncharted, but I was lucky enough to get into treasure. I was lucky enough to work with the best people in the business. I still can't believe it. I'm reading a book myself, and I say, did I really do that? But oh, awesome. uh, I was the last guy to break in under Art McKee, for example. What right. a, I got in on mostly the last of all the good stuff, but at least I did it and I was there. I worked with Jack Haskins, D.L. Cheney, uh, Mel Fisher for 12 years. So, um, yeah, the book is about 40 years of me going to many different exotic places and people. Arthur, Sir Arthur C. Clarke, I got to work with him. Um, I was lucky, and I don't mind admitting it. And I've, I've been successful. So that's what the book's about. Awesome. Right. Well, well thanks, sure for the the whole... thanks for the call, caller. We've got another call coming in, 863. Persistence and consistence. May the treasures be with you. Thank you. 863, you're on the air. Can you extinguish your device? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Dell Winders in Haines City. Hey, Dell, what you doing, dude? <laughs> hey, my friend, I don't, I don't have any questions for you, but uh, I just uh, called to uh, give you support and, and say that I'm supporting the program and I'm listening to it. I appreciate that. Man, you know, I was trying to remember the last time I saw you. I, please don't tell me it was many, many years. Uh, you know, I've, I've been on uh, dang medications and so forth, and my memory is uh, shot. Uh, I don't remember, but, uh, yeah, I probably It'll get was. worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm going through the same thing. <laughs> oh, so uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. It's great to hear 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 your voice. Matter of fact, with, at this point, what's the name of that town you live in? It's on Route 27, isn't it? Uh yeah, I'm in the Haines City. Hey, that's right. It's yeah. Well, I sure would like to see you sometime. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I'm 82 years old now, and uh, bedridden about 20 hours a day, and uh, so. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it'd have to be soon. Well, that is determination that, uh, you know, you're still able to call in and show your support for Carl. Oh, well, you know, I, I support anything in, in treasure hunting. Um, mm -hmm. I just, uh, uh, wish that, that I could be out there myself. Yeah, right. Yes, you have. And I want to say that he's one of the few people that's been in this business longer than me. And he's older than me, and that makes me feel good to hear from him. <laughs> Thanks for well, calling me. Makes me feel it makes me feel good to be able to talk. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's good to re reunite two longtime friends through the airwaves. Whether or not you can be there physically or not, at least you can talk. That's great. Fantastic. Exactly. It is. That's that's really awesome. Uh, <clears throat> we certainly appreciate the call and the support. Oh, well, you're very, very welcome, and I'm happy to do it and happy to be able to do it. 
All okay. right. Thanks for the call. Thank you for the call, you. and uh, by all means, continue uh, to listen. Thank you, Kiffy. Go. All right. Well, you're uh, you're definitely getting quite a bit of uh, support out there, Carl. I can use it. Send the <laughs> checks to my P.O. box. <laughs> Seventeen exactly. thirty-three, right? That's right. Seventeen thirty-three. That's where treasure hunting started. I don't know how many of you people know that. Art McKee was the father of modern day treasure hunting. I talked I talked to him in the hospital every day he was in in nineteen eighty. And his, the day before he died, I was talking to him. I said Art, there's an article in the Keys newspaper that says you're the father of modern-day treasure hunting. He said, well, that's okay as long as they don't call me the grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, you were mentioning your, your book. How can people purchase this? Uh, when is it available for purchase, well, I guess, right maybe a better now, question. I'm taking advanced orders if you... You want to send me a, a, a check? They're twenty four ninety five. It's a big, good size book. And if you send it to Post Office Box seventeen thirty three, Tavernier, Florida three three zero seven zero, I'll eat the shipping on it inside the United States. Uh, after that, there's going to be a shipping charge because it's going to be on uh, uh, Amazon and all those other places. I'll have my first big order in three weeks. So if you can okay. order in that time, no shipping. And, uh, I, oh, I'm going to give everybody that buys a book a canceled check from Jack Asker. I go for a way and then good bookmarkers. So you can get Jack Haskins autograph. Wow. I'll send you guys the electric bill ones, but the other people I'll send something interesting. <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's so awesome. That's, that's it. It's uh, 40 years of going everywhere, doing everything, and meeting lots of people and treasure recovery. Right. And, and this book does, like you said, it, it basically covers your experiences uh, from the beginning, uh, basically, of your time in the hobby, your start in the hobby, your experiences that you've had throughout. Absolutely. I, I, in fact, the people that I got to us, and then going down a long list of the who's who in this business. Mm -hmm. and just the, in fact, I think I end up the book by, by uh, uh, the quote. Uh, if I have seen further than others, it's because I have stood on the shoulders of giants. Ah, nice. I like I that. Like that. Yeah, definitely. And to, and to mention some of the greats that you've worked with, Robert Weller, uh, Art McKee, I'll let you pick up from there. Yeah, that Mel Fisher. Jack uh, Haskins. Yeah, uh, D.L. Cheney. But, you know, D.L. never got any kind of publicity, but... He, he was absolutely uh, phenomenal. In fact, the weather didn't mean much to him because hmm. I'd get up in the morning and I'd look out and the palm trees are bending way to the ground. DL mm -hmm. calls and says, get your butt over here. And I, oh man, I knew I was <laughs> in for it. But right. yeah, I, 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 lucky. I don't mind admitting it. I was lucky. I got in at just the right time. And I was telling you earlier about uh, Art McKee used to draw maps for me, hand draw treasure maps for me. Art McKee did that, oh and God. I was too I was too meek to ask him, Art, would you sign these? <laughs> yeah, they'd be worth a <laughs> fortune today. They are. That's right. That's right. Well, yeah. Speaking of a, a a small fortune, I I do for the folks that don't know, but uh, we are Skype live. Uh, the number is 419-549-5744. And again, like Josh earlier said, you can go into Skype, search for Beyond Sight and Sound, and just click the little telephone there, and it's a free call for anyone that wants to get in on tonight's show and talk with Carl Fisma. Um, and exactly. You'll see the uh, logo artwork for the show, so you'll know it's the right one. 
Right. And speaking of Art McKee, uh, I have to comment on that beautiful, stunning, framed uh, map that you have in back of you. And I know you told me it was uh, once belonged to Art McKee. So uh, why don't you elaborate on that one? Yeah, well, in Art McKee's pet wreck was the uh, the Capitana of the 1733 fleet. But uh, Art really pretty much had the okay to work all the 1733 wrecks. He built the first treasure museum in the United States. And uh, Ed Link actually helped it finance it for him. Ed Link was the, the man who invented the Link trainer to train pilots. He's an American hero. He, he, he got credit for shortening the war. Be, and he was a treasure hunter. He built mm -hmm. the first underwater metal detectors. They ran a million pilots through the Link trainer. You know, that's a simulator, but it was so good and so accurate. And that's right. part of the reason why we won the World War II. Oh. Ed Link later got into treasure hunting with Art McKee. He built two underwater metal detectors using uh, Korean War uh, landmine finders and encasing them. There's only two. One of them is in the museum in Isla Mirada, History of Diving Museum, and the other one's in my garage. Oh. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. Anyhow, it, it, they're, these guys were heroes for crying yeah. out loud. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and so I'm going to donate it to the Ed Link Foundation. It's uh, over there. I'm sorry I didn't remember the name. It's over near Fort Pierce. That's okay. Uh, that's an awesome thing to do. That's uh, kudos to you. That's you know it's something that's just laying there, uh, and uh, it's it's a great tribute to him. I'm sure, uh, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people would like to see it. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll take some pictures and stick them on my Facebook page and I'll oh, send great. them. Yeah. Now, there was, I, it was either Look or Life magazine in July of 1954. I have several copies of it. It shows Ed Link, Art McKee, and Dr. Mendel Peterson, who was curator at the Smithsonian forever. The three of them are diving on the Capitana using Ed Link's metal detectors. Uh, I could only find like three copies. I gave one to a good friend and I saved the other two for me. But awesome. you talk, that's how far back that the treasure goes. It right. just back, back in those days, you were not molested by bureaucrats because the government did not care about those old rusty cannons and rock piles. But boy, when they started finding gold and silver, you yeah, oh, we've got yeah. To suddenly, people are given attention. Yeah, big different yeah. story there for sure. And uh, we have a question that came out of the chat room uh, from Bill Black. He had a question for you, Cap, and okay. he wants to know what you feel would be the most productive uh, galleons from the seventeen fifteen fleet today. Good question. Yeah, well, that that yeah, yeah it is. Uh, some are easily accessible, and then here again, it depends on your equipment. If you've got a nice solar boat, it can move a lot of sand. Douglas Beach has been great. I had most of my luck on the cabin site because there wasn't a lot of sand, and uh, and there was a lot of treasure. The Riamar site is, to me, is still a sleeper. Uh, there's mostly hard pan everywhere, very little, and I found a lot of nice stuff over the years on Riamar. Mm -hmm. Sandy Point is one people stay away from because it's it's under a lot of sand. So if you've got a good blower boat, I'd say start there. And if you've mm -hmm. got a good blower boat, go on down to Douglas Beach because that scatter is for, it looks that I know of, it's probably at least two miles. And I would say there's a lot of virgin spots in there, and you just never know. Right. Anyway, just gotta... that's what I would do on the fleet. As you know, they had two big hits there this past summer. <clears throat> that's so right. Bureaucrats the world around are, are, I guess they're having heart attacks. I hope so. <laughs> uh, every, 
Mr. Brisbane got a lot of nasty emails. I hope he don't oh. mind me saying that. I have the greatest respect for Brent Brisbane. I yeah. mean, he, he bought the fleet, and then he turned himself into an A1 treasure hunter. Mm-hmm. A great, I mean, it just, and he's from Cincinnati. So, oh, yes, hey. He, yeah. Ohio man. That's right. Yeah, I know. I've seen a lot of his uh, uh, treasures, and we've all seen them all over the news. And uh, uh, kudos for him to uh, stick with it. I know he's been in the business for many a moons, and uh, you know, perseverance uh, has certainly paid off for that man. That's the main word right there, perseverance. Yeah. Art McKee. The first thing Art McKee told me was, "I'm going to tell you how to find treasure." It's in my book, by the way. But it's so it's such a great story. Art McKee said, I'm going to tell you how to find treasure. And I thought he was going to give me a secret location or something. <laughs> but what he said was, you'll find it if you don't quit looking. And that's what Mr. Brisbane did. That's what I did. And I quoted that so many times. You'll find it if you don't quit. I've that's seen right. people come in to work the fleet last two weeks and get out of town. Well, anyway, I hope that yeah. answers the question for you. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to agree. It, it works whether you're looking for big Spanish treasure or if you're looking for single coins on the beach. You're not going to find it if you're sitting over there on the couch. Get yeah, out there exactly. and look for it. You've Did got to you get out and look. Say that? I had a telemarketing show and I was selling metal detectors. And I used to say, you know, don't buy this if you're going to keep your butt on the couch and it's in the no, closet. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I did not hear that. See, we do. I used great... to say that on television. <laughs> wow, no kidding. Hey, great minds think alike, buddy. That's why we're both well, treasure hunters, whether we're big yeah. treasure hunters or small treasure hunters, right? Well, great minds think alike, but exactly in the treasure business, you got a, you got a half a bubble off a of plum. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! And and I listen, need another, time, I need a crash, a crass commercial here. We're now offering dive trips on Spanish galleons in the Florida Keys, and uh, uh, we did one experimental job. We had fourteen people go out with us. Everybody liked it, but we'll give you a. Uh, in the morning, we have classes on how to do it, what we do, what equipment, and, uh, and everything about it, everything you wanted to know, metal detectors. And nice. then that afternoon, we'll make two dives on two of the 1733 sites. Uh, the cost, we were going to charge uh, 295 but that's a lot of money. We cut it down to $195 for the classroom and the dive. If anybody's interested, uh, we're just about to advertise it, but you can email me or Facebook me on it. Nice. That. that sounds very interesting and not a bad deal at all. And, and have, we've got a caller. Oh, what were you saying, Leighton? Just a quick question before he uh, takes that call real quick. Do you have to be certified in order to get in on this? Well, unfortunately, you do. But we snorkelers are invited to come along at a lesser okay. rate. I don't know what it is. I don't own the dive shop. But okay. uh, the font is our first target. And, I'm here. you know, those wrecks are in shallow water. So if you're right. a snorkeler, you, can, you see more snorkeling than you do diving. Right. Okay, right. great. Well, we got a couple more callers. Go ahead, Dave. Josh, take one. Uh, yeah, let's see here. Um, I just saw him come across the screen here. Uh, looks like hey, we've Josh. got one from New Hampshire. Oh, that would be me. Okay. Hey, Josh, it's Brandon. How you doing, Leighton and Josh? All right. Good to hear from you, Brandon. Uh, for the other caller, hang in there. We'll get to you here right quick. Okay. Captain Carl, I have a quick question for you. With as many dives as you have done, how many times have you gone down looking for something that you haven't found, and what is the one thing that you pursued the most times that you were not able to get your hands on while looking for something in a dive? Wow, what a question. <laughs> um, yeah. First, I, I, never, I never kept track of my dives 
you know, like with the log book and everything, but I estimate I've probably dove about 4,000 times. Um, um, I, when, and when we say I've been on 300 shipwrecks, that's true, but a lot of them you just take a quick look at and you, you keep right on going. I have good information. It's actually on a slave ship that sank in the Gulf of Mexico. And I've been chasing that thing for about 15 years. And you might think, ah, oh, well, a slave ship, but this particular vessel was on its way back to Europe. And so there wouldn't be any slaves on board, but there would be a lot of gold coins on board. And you say, well, how do you know they're gold coins? Well, when the, uh, like uh, New Orleans um, and uh, Mobile, Alabama, and Pensacola, Florida were three big slave markets. And when the guys that owned the plantations had to go to these things, they took their buckboard and a horse. So silver was worth, if you had one gold coin, it was equal to about 16 silver coins. So weight-wise alone, it behooved the buyers just to bring gold coins. Um, and we know how many we know how many slaves were on board, and the average slave price at the time was like um, nine hundred dollars. So you multiply that, and then you come up with how many in gold coins it might be worth. Now there was another slave ship that was the one I've chased that thing for fifteen years. Um, I know we're close, but it, and it's in kind of deep water, so you you've got to watch your decompression time when you're even searching for it. Right. Another another slave ship called the Guerrero sank here in Key Largo. The uh, I have a letter from the president of the NAACP thanking me for helping bring that piece of history back to light. We've mm -hmm. got a real nice. nice yeah, we have a, and that was when the, Mr. Mifumi was president of the NAACP. We aired that in, we won first place in two black film festivals with that. So, unfortunately, since it's inside state waters, they mm -hmm. aren't letting us pursue it because a bureaucrat has to find that and hog all the credit for it. But they right. don't have our information. Uh, I always turned it into some kind of bitterness. I don't mean to do that. It's just dealing with them all these years. I'm kind of right. warped. Right. But uh, right. I hope that kind of answers your question. Well, that was a great oh, question. Sure did, Ted. Okay. Well, thanks for the call, Swansea. Hey, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Carl, yeah. uh, an amazing guest, and I hope you come on more than one more time. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. I, I, I will. Thanks a lot. Awesome. <laughs> All right. 905. 905 area codes, Canada. <laughs> oh, it's Steve. How's it going, guys? Hey. Pretty good, Steve. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for calling. Good. I, I just got in from work, and I, 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 I heard Fizz, and I thought I better, I better give a call and say hi to Fizz. How are you, Fizz? I talked to Denise. What do you I'm say? Just kidding. I'm doing all right. <laughs> I'm good, fine. good. Are you freezing? We, we got, there? we got to, we got to come down and see you soon. I, I, I figured I'd give you a call and be the first one to uh, make a booking on your trip. Oh, oh good, good. Uh, you got my phone number, don't you? Oh yeah, I got your phone number. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll, give I'll, me a buzz. I'll, I'll give you a shout. Maybe we can talk late and into coming down with us. Oh, you know I'm going. You know that. I'm in, buddy. <laughs> right. I don't even have to ask. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, we've got video here. You can actually see he's packing his bags as we speak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Did you see, yeah. you, did you see my regulator? You'll have to come down, too, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you got one of the most amazing treasure hunters, like, anywhere on tonight, so I'm not going to take too much of your, your, your time, uh, but... Um, we had an opportunity, Leighton and I, uh, I think it was uh, last year, to go down and, and uh, hang out with Fizz for a while. And I'm telling you, it was, it was it's kind of what dreams are made of. You sit around with Fizz and have a couple Cokes, and I'm telling you, the, the <laughs> stories are incredible. 
Oh, absolutely. I can yeah. imagine that would be just a, a great experience in its own. I mean, Fizz is a great a guy to talk to. Like <laughs> oh, absolutely. That was probably one of the things that will go down in my mind's history, uh, just to be within, uh, you know, uh, eye distance straight across uh, from this gentleman. Uh, I, I can't say enough uh, enough about the guy. I mean, I just uh, fell in love with all the stories that he had and all the experience. Um, as you know, Steve, uh, I didn't stop talking about that until uh, just last week. <laughs> yeah, we're still talking about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to say. And, and then we uh, we got him around for the show, and we talked to him the other night and started it all up again. Yes, sir. Yeah, well, like I say, uh, Fizz, I just wanted to say hi to you, and we're going to come down and see you soon. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah, and uh, I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a private call, and we'll uh, we'll set that up. And I I, I apologize, guys. I haven't uh, like I said, I just came in from work, and I didn't get a chance to hear the uh, uh, earlier part of the show. But um, I mean, the, the stuff that Fizz can talk about with uh, Jack Haskins and all of his uh, Mel Fisher days on the Atosha and all that kind of stuff is incredible. That's right. Funny. Yeah. Well, yeah. when you get when you get the book, you get Jack Haskins' autograph. I saved all of his canceled checks. There, I got over a thousand of them, and wow. I I couldn't throw them away. So I thought I'll stick one in every book that's sold, and it'll be a, a good idea. bookmarker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A nice little uh, added bonus, so to speak. Yeah. And Sis, have you talked uh, tonight about Arthur C. Clarke at all? Not yet. Uh, actually, we we haven't got there, and and the Taj Mahal treasure, but. It, I, there were so many amazing things happened there. I was sitting in Clark's office with him, and uh, <clears throat> Stanley Kubrick phoned. Stanley Kubrick phoned, and I'm sitting there. He <laughs> oh, my Lord. Enough, you know, he only made 13 movies, and him and Clark got a contract to make another one. Unfortunately, they both died, but I'm sitting there, and Stanley Kubrick called. I said, let me talk to him. And Clark looked at me and said, uh, would you excuse us a minute, please? I, so I had to leave. <laughs> yeah, wow. incredible. Like, for those people who are listening that don't know who Arthur C. Clarke is, he wrote a 2001 A Space Odyssey. And he, and he dove and was great friends with, uh, with Fizz. It was amazing. Yeah, he dove with Cousteau way back in. He should be in the Diving Hall of Fame and it was his idea to put the tank in Huntsville, Alabama, to train the astronauts. Oh, wow. We were, oh, we really? Were, yeah, we were trying to raise money to go back over and film a big documentary kind of adventure. And Buzz Aldrin called us. Buzz Aldrin, the second man on the moon. <laughs> oh, and my he goodness. Said, he said, you guys going and diving with Arthur? Well, what do you, uh, above, uh, uh, yes, sir, Mr. Aldrin, we certainly. <laughs> and he said, can I go with you? And I said, no, we don't want you. No, I didn't say that. It's just, just the fact that he would call. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's going to say, kind of like when Carl calls us late, and it's like, yeah, exactly. it, it's Carl. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's how we feel about you, Carl. <laughs> well, hey, listen, guys, I'm, I'm going to let you guys go and let you talk to Fizz, because uh, I'd rather listen to Fizz than myself, too. So... <laughs> God bless all you guys. Thanks for calling in, Fizz. Uh, it's uh, it's a uh, a pleasure and honor to hear you tonight. Thanks. Thank and you thanks, very much, Steve. Yeah, thank you for calling in, Steve. Thanks, Steve. I'll okay, you guys. God bless you guys. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn up the uh, I'm gonna turn up the computer and listen to you. All right. Have a great night. Thanks okay. for calling in, buddy. Uh, okay, we'll see ya. Uh, well, I thought he'd oh. never leave. <laughs> 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 oh man well I'm i'll tell you, you steve, thank you very much <laughs> he's a great guy and for those yes, of you is. who don't know who steve zizulik is uh uh just to throw out a little bit of info on steve he is the gentleman from the first series of oak island so uh a great guy a great friend of mine we've had some really terrific uh fun together and some some uh really good trips Although we never seem to find a whole lot, we sure do share a lot of great, friendly times. Right. Uh, Sometimes it's not always about the find. 
Yeah, it was. It, he's just a super guy. I can't say enough about Steve. Right. Great guy so, to talk to. So Arthur C. Clarke, to get back to this, uh, Fizz, tell me, you took him or on his very last dive. Am I correct on saying that, or I got to film his very last dive. Okay. My okay. cameraman busted his eardrum and blood was pouring out of his ear, and I said, "Holy <laughs> crap!" I said, yeah. "Dude, I don't think you should be diving." It was a hundred foot dive, Jeez. and. Uh, so he said, he handed me the camera, and he said, you know how to use this? I said, no. So he gave me a, a quick two-minute lesson, and, some, and he even said, that footage was great. I have a picture on my Facebook page. It's back in the photos of Arthur Clark sitting on a big uh, uh, Navy stockless anchor in 100 feet of water. I'm just so proud of that. Well, I'll tell you, I would be proud of it, too. I mean, you are a living legend. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than what you say. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, right. to be around, like you said, you got into it at the perfect, perfect time in your life. That's right. Yeah, amazing. So, Just uh, totally something, amazing. Something uh, people might not know, if it wasn't for Arthur Clark, you wouldn't have that cell phone in your pocket. That's he right. came up with the idea of satellite communication, and this was in 1946. He announced to the world, in the very near future, we're going to be talking from one side of the planet to the other by bouncing our voices off satellites in outer space. 1946. And they said, you're crazy. And he yeah. said, yes, but we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> That's it. Well, you did a very good impression of him. Uh, I guess you I did. On that. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, yeah, exactly. A man way ahead of his times. So if way he did ahead. that, in the, right? If he did that in the forties, uh, here we are in two thousand, you know, sixteen or so. They've been invented for the last ten or fifteen years. So uh, a man fifty years ahead of his time. The the orbit the satellites travel in is named the Clark Belt. Is it? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, Steven Spielberg and Harrison Ford, when they were filming one of the Indiana Jones movies over there, they, they visited Arthur every day and had dinner with him. And mm -hmm. Sri Lanka is where he lived. And it's one of the most beautiful places you're ever going to lay eyes. In fact, Spielberg said it was a movie set built by God. <laughs> Ah, jeez. Wow, amazing. I'll tell you, you know, like I said, uh, to be, let's put it this way, to have lived what you've lived, uh, if I could even just have half of what you've done or have been in half of the, uh, uh, around half of the people that you've been around, uh, what an honor. Right, just to be able to experience even a portion of the experiences that he's had. Right. It was an honor for me. I, I, I did a little video uh, talking about my book, of course, but I got to the chapter of, uh, I got to be in a movie with Lloyd Bridges. And on the times we weren't filming, he and I used to stand around and talk about Diving, Mike Nelson, of course we talked about diving. In right. fact, we did photo ops and he signed my picture, Carl, happy and safe diving, Mike Nelson. Oh, man. But, uh, Very cool. Now think about this. Mr. Bridges and, and Art McKee, if they were standing side by side, you'd swear they were brothers. They looked alike, their hair was the same, they combed it the same, they were the same size. And oh. I I talked to... Mike Nelson about, would you ever make a movie about Art McKee? And he said, who's Art McKee? I said, Mike Nelson doesn't know Art McKee. What <laughs> but anyway, I, we talked about it for hours. And he said, he said, I would accept that. He said, I got to be approached through the right channels, but I would take it. I talked to his producer of that movie, a lady, and she said, Wow, can you write that down for me? So that night I wrote it down. I gave it to her the next day. Mm -hmm. Didn't hear nothing. Two years later, she wrote me a letter saying, 
Dear Mr. Fismer, I still have your idea on my desk. That's how Hollywood works. Not in any big hurry, but then uh, uh, Mr. Bridges died and Art McKee died, so it's yeah. never going to be. But I do have a friend of mine. I, I can't say his name. He won an Academy Award, and he's friends with the Bridges brothers. I sent him that little video. I said, one of them bro Bridges brothers could play Art McKee. So, mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully. Well, never that's say right. never. That's right. That's never right. say never. It, it could happen. You never, never know. And, yeah. speaking of, and speaking of, you know, Mike Nelson, I mean, I grew up with him. Uh, I couldn't wait for Sea Hunt to get on that that uh, Sunday afternoon at 7 in the evening or whatever it was when it used to come on. Uh, I was glued to the front of that chair. Well, right. that's in the that's in my book too, and uh, I just he just one and uh, there are bunches of other people in there like Herbert Werner, he wrote a book called The Iron Coffins. Mm -hmm. He was going to go treasure hunting with a submarine. In fact, he lost three submarines in the war. Nobody can say they survived three submarine sinkings. Wow. Uh, that Iron Coffins book is exciting, uh, but. Mm -hmm. The only reason I got to talk to him was his backers were wondering how feasible his ideas were. They they flew me up to New Jersey, and Herbert Werner was basically obligated to spend a day with me going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to read Shadow Divers? By yes, Robert I am Herbert familiar, familiar with, with that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Richie, Richie Kohler called up Herbert Werner to talk about something, and Herbert Werner wouldn't give him the time of day. And I said, that's <laughs> ironic. He was practically kissing my butt all day one day. But he'd have to be the most the most unusual or most unforgettable character I've ever met. Uh, what, right. And he was working with a World War II uh, PT boat commander. Well, I met him, too, and I'm sorry I don't remember his name, but... There we're going treasure hunting in a submarine. Interesting. I, I just put all them stories. Sam Milner and his wife, CJ, actually did the hard work. All I did was talk into a tape recorder and drink. <laughs> and wow. how many pages of hard work did this come out to be? Uh, uh, it's a little over 60,000 words is what the publisher told me. Wow. Yeah, you know, it's a this it's is, good size. So it's 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 definitely is it soft cover? Is it? Uh, yeah, it's it's soft, but it's a big okay. soft cover. One hundred and twenty-five okay. pictures, and I mean pictures of the old timey guys, the new guys, it, nice. all the all the ace treasure hunters are in there. Nice. And all the other crap I've been into. And nice. uh, speaking of uh, some of these names, as well as the uh, Shadow Divers book you brought up, you also know John Chatterton. Yeah, mm -hmm. John and I, are. Uh, we've agreed to be doing some work together. Uh, he was a guest star in episode five of my TV show, Treasure Divers. I saw that. And he has gear I've never even heard of. And there he, I'm watching him getting geared up, getting dressed and ready to go to the back of the boat and jump in. I'm carrying stuff. I'm holding him upright to get to the back of the boat. And just before he jumps in, I said, wait a minute, John, you forgot this 57 Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> you got everything else. Yeah, that was the only thing he was missing. Oh, man. <laughs> Hey, speaking of diving, I got a quick question for you, but I just want to throw that number back out there again for the uh, for the listeners. It's 419-549-5744. And they can also get in touch with us on Skype. It's a free call from anywhere. Uh, just go into your Skype, look for Beyond Sight and Sound, look for the logo, and uh, just press that little uh, phone button, and you can talk live with Captain Carl. And while I have your attention, uh, Fizz, uh, I know that you dove the San Francisco. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And would you go back? Uh, you mean the 1733 San Francisco? Correct. Yeah. I've been on it a lot. I found coins there with D.L. Cheney back when it was legal to find coins there. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's the good news about that is. 
it's on hard pan bottom as well. And okay. uh, the ballast is there and scattered, and there's a few timbers left. But they uh, they burned it. In fact, they burned all the ones that were sit, sticking out of the water line, which was 16 in number. They burned them. And uh, the, the San Francisco has at least a ton of lead that's burned and melted, little beady balls of lead. And you talk about treasure hunting, or your metal detectors banging, on, it does there all the time. But mm -hmm. um, it, I love all of them. I've been on, I haven't been on all of them, but I've been on most of them. Right. So the San Francisco you think is worth going back to? And it's in relatively shallow water, correct? Oh, yeah, like 10 feet. Right. And the mm -hmm. current, the current can get going through there pretty good. If it, okay. it's worth going back to, if if you were ever allowed to go back. But right. Noah, Noah, the bureaucratic nightmare that used to be just reporting the weather, is mm -hmm. uh, they own everything and don't you touch them. They got caught <laughs> recently tripling fines. Like you know, they said, well, now if you get caught making mud. It's five thousand dollars. Your problem oh, hits something, but they and they actually got they got found uh, cheating people on excessive fines to build up their war chest to put us out of business. Yes, and uh, in the firing, instead of firing them, they got a three hundred thousand dollar bonus and transferred to the Bureau of Land Management out west. But you don't hear that on the news. No, I oh, well, no, that. absolutely yeah. not. And I nice. feel sorry for you guys out west. I know you had a lot of problems. Believe me, I've got friends there. I've been all through the superstitions and helping to find gold mines, and which was a lot of fun, but I like diving better. And the, the BLM is crucified when the recent thing there with that Bundy family. Now some guy got killed yesterday, for Christ's sake. I have nothing good to say about Washington, D.C., and they don't like me either. <laughs> you know, you're calling it as it is, am I correct? I'm right. What? Sometimes there's just no way to sugarcoat it. That's it. It is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Right, exactly. So I did have another question. Uh, just, just briefly, I know I'm sure other people are probably thinking this. Maybe they haven't asked it. I haven't seen it in the chat. Uh, my personal question to you is, Fizz, and I'm sure you hear this all the time, I often get this particular question when I'm out relic hunting or, or looking for coins or whatever I'm doing at the time. Uh, what is your, what would you consider your very, very best find personally? Well, um, I like, I like, uh, religious artifacts. Uh, it's not that I'm devout, but I, I am a believer, and I think that uh, when my time comes to pass over, that he might cut me a little extra slack. I had a dream I had a dream once that God came down and he opened up the ledger book and he runs his finger down the F's and he said, "Fizz, fizz, it's close. You know what I'm saying?" I said, "Yes, sir, I sure do." <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> um, I like re the religious artifacts. I found them on several wrecks. I've got a reliquary that had two crosses in it and, uh, and wooden hand carved rosewood inlaid with 22 karat gold. Nice. And then in the crossbars are two little slivers of wood that came from a cross of a saint or a martyr 2000 years ago. Now, nice. yeah, well, you know, like, well, when St. Peter was crucified, he, he said, uh, I don't deserve to die like Christ. Crucify me upside down. But when he was mm -hmm. dead, the, the people, the faithful, cut up his cross and passed out little pieces. I'm not saying what I got is from St. Pete, but it's right. from one of them back there. And that, sure. I have to say that's my favorite. Awesome. Uh, I, found that's, a, that's... I found a couple of reliquaries, but that's the only one intact with the relic still in it. Awesome. Right. And does that also have the uh, the prayer beads with it, or is that just yeah. the two crosses? Well, there's some some of them were left, the uh, okay. beads and two crosses. And what were the beads made out of? Were they also wood, or were wood. they... Yeah, well, they were wood. Yeah, beautiful. That must be beautiful. I'd love to see, yeah. uh, I'd love to see a picture of that. If you could post that, uh, I'm sure the other folks would like to see that on your webpage. Absolutely, well, and we've got a caller. 
Uh, it's it's hey, a hey guys, it's, it's Brandon again. I just wanted to post something that was put out in the chat room, which nobody else will call in for some reason, but they wanted to know that if Captain Fizz has ever done much for land hunting. Uh, yes, I started as a land hunter here in the swamps, and I'm going to tell you, once I hit the water, I realized I'd never go chasing them in the swamps again. That was hard work. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet. And, and like I said earlier, I have friends out west, like Arizona especially, and, and Oregon, and uh, I go out to visit them. We did some filming. We got into some of the old gold mines that were all forgotten about, but the idea was that since going up, it's not now. When it was, they thought, well, hell, we'll reopen these mines again. And, of course, we were chasing the, the Lost Dutchman mine, which I believe it was one. The Peralta family was the big influential family in that part of the world. And uh, they had seven well-producing gold mines, great producing gold mines. King Ferdinand VII of Spain, uh, early 1800s, uh, Simon Bolivar went through Central and South America and liberated them all. So King Ferdinand of Spain, basically the last colonial king, basically a failure, he was going to pick up all his money and go live with the Peraltas out in Arizona. It's a hell of a historic story and everything. So, yeah, I've I've done it. I've tried it. On the mm -hmm. if you count beach metal detecting, well, I've done quite a bit of land stuff. Technically, that is on the land, and I've done pretty yeah. good. Best time, of course, is during a hurricane. That's when those coins are turning over. Right. So. Grab your machine and come on down to Fort Pierce the next time you see a storm coming. There you go. <laughs> well, Carl, right. have you also ever gone to, uh, have you ever done anything like colonial metal detecting or anything like that as far as, you know, like in the New England area or along the East Coast for Civil War relics and stuff like that on land, or was it specifically basically around water? It was mostly water. I found a couple of Civil War ships didn't spend much time on them. In fact, one of them was a, a, a Union supply ship. It had a lot of uh, hatchet heads and things on board to build, make tent stakes and stuff. I didn't want it, but we found, we found the wreck. We put the blower on it. We opened it up. We found out what it was. And I, I said, let's be friendly. Let's give this to the state of Florida and maybe they won't hate it. So we did. They sent it to the Navy, and we got the nastiest letter from the Navy you ever read. I thought they were going to come down and kill us. Don't wow. you dare you touch our wreck. And they didn't know where it was. We gave it to them. Wow. Well, <laughs> Some people, thing. there's there just but, no please. But no, I've never been up in the New England area, but I have bought some of the stuff those guys were finding, um, like when they used to cut the coins to make change. <clears throat> those pieces, those pieces are worth more money <clears throat> than the whole coin. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple of them here in my case. Nice. nice. Well, Carl, you're you're in great company then because Layton is from Massachusetts, and you know where to go if you want to look into any of that stuff. That's right. Layton told me where to go once, and I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Carl, because, you know, I'm always being told I never get lost. So there's always someone telling me where to go. Yeah, that's, that's kind of my problem. I'm always getting told where to go. Yeah. <laughs> but I will take this opportunity, Fizz. If you'd like to come see me, you've got a place to stay. I'll take you to a nice colonial field. Hopefully you get some nice live scents, buddy. It'd have to be in the summertime. That's okay. Yeah, I know. I know. We talked about that earlier before the show, but uh, I understand that uh, you don't like anything under 60 degrees, so uh, that's no problem. I can relate with that. <laughs> I was down in South America diving Ballast Mound right below. I'm dropping down on it, and I hit a thermocline. <laughs> I mean, it gave me an instant instant migraine headache i got i struggled back to the boat and just laid on the deck sleeping Jesus. i can't be told and that was under 70 degrees yeah well them thermoclines are cold you know yep. you got like 
we had like 20 feet of warm water, and then all of a sudden you're in ice water. Yeah, yeah. We have them up here too in New England. Only thing is, you at least have some visibility no matter what the temperature of the waters are, up or down. We have yeah. to deal with that cloudy water in front of us. So, uh, yeah, not a fun situation. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of cloudy water, I have uh, uh, another question for you. We talked earlier about, you know, when we feel like maybe uh, we've kind of, as we both know, uh, this is kind of an understatement or maybe a silly statement. I don't know. You you take it for what it's worth. Uh, but we always sometimes feel like we've cleaned out an area. Sometimes Never. when you move object, right, exactly. Never cleaned out, but, uh, you know, feel like we've kind of cleaned it to the point where it's been picked over pretty well and in your mind takes over and you feel like there's not a whole lot left in these areas. Uh, but then sometimes you uncover something or that's been there for a while, like rocks, for instance, or maybe an old cannon that you haven't moved out of the way and you decide to move these particular objects. And I'll let you take it from there. Tell us that story. Oh, yeah, that was Jack Haskins and I were working what's known as the cabin site on the 1715 fleet, which is off Sebastian, Florida. Um, and this is why it, even if I have a metal detector with a discriminator, and I've had a few, I never turn that on. I want to see every hit. So like we, I found a cannon and, you know, it hit real big and you got a real big hit and you're hoping this is the chest of coins I've been waiting for. But uh, as we dug it about a, a three foot hole, I guess, and the, it was an eight foot iron cannon. Eight foot was the most popular size. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'd have had my uh, my discriminator on, uh, it would have said trash. So uh, Jack and I lifted it up out. We had lift bags. We lifted it out of the hole and then we rolled it over and there's 200 eight reals stuck to the bottom of it. That thing, mm -hmm. you, you heard the term loose cannon. Well, you can imagine in a hurricane and they're flying on that thing must have come down on a box of coins. Absolutely. And, th right. and those coins were in excellent condition. Iron protects silver in the salt water situation. And those I'm glad were you brought all grade one. Go ahead. Oh, I was nice. just going to say, yeah, that's, that's what I was just going to say. They must have been all grade one because, like you said, a lot of people don't realize that iron, when it gets close to the silver, uh, certainly protects uh, silver objects. Oh, absolutely. And that was the occasion Jack and I went out that night and got drunk. <laughs> well, that's, that's a good awesome. reason. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Definitely. And speaking, I know we had uh, kind of touched on your favorite find. If you, because you've dove, I mean, all over the place. Is there just that one particular spot that you find yourself thinking, you know, I could dive here the rest of my days and just be happy as could be? I guess I could, but all the those kind of places are inside the state limit, and uh, ah. so it's tough. But I do have some areas in the Gulf of Mexico, two of them, outside state waters, that um, I go back to every so often. I, I haven't hit it big, but it, it, it looks to me like it has the potential for stuff. Mm -hmm. And one of them I was mentioning earlier was a slave ship. And, right. Uh, yeah, and I would say there's several million dollars in gold coins on that vessel. I, I know, I know we're close to it, but it's every like for the last 15 years. If I get a few days, especially in the summertime, we go out and see what else we can find. Mm -hmm. When you say we, who are we diving with? Oh, you'd like to know. No, I just, <laughs> I'm more, <laughs> uh, uh, mostly I go out, uh, well, Chatterton did a mag survey for me out there not too okay. long ago, but uh, uh, Dr. Harvey Kaltzis, good friend of mine, he's been treasure hunting, but mostly doctor work, and a man named Dennis Benefito that I've been associated with for a while. You know, they're not notoriously big in the business, but they're good. They're good at what they do. 
that's all that counts. As long as you've got somebody that you can rely on and count on and, uh, you know, you've got a good man on boat, that's what you need, right? Absolutely. That's yeah, right. It's, it's just yeah. as important of a job up top as it is down below. Yeah, exactly. well, I used to do that too. That's right. We've all been there. It's always good to have a good man on the boat that's somebody that can, uh, you know, keep an eye on things up while you're down below. Right. <clears throat> Well, I was uh, going to ask him, uh, just did you have a question too, Josh? Go ahead, sorry. Well, I was just going to say it, it's unfortunate that we got a late start with Carl because he's just, he's got so many stories. Uh, but we have had a number of callers and we've ran a little long because of the late start, but there's still a couple of things I think he was wanting to mention too. Yeah, uh, yes. Like his, uh, Best job. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I work for Princess Cruise Lines now, too. What? Why weren't they there 40 years ago? <laughs> Best job I ever had. The people are nice. I mean, the number one guy in the company uh, emailed me at the end of the first cruise, and he said, you're not leaving the boat, are you? I said, well, you know, it, yeah. And he said, just stay there. We, we, uh, Brad Williamson and I, we feet, we fell into the top three acts of the top 100 for Princess Cruise Lines. You know, we talk about treasure and we have treasure on display and we talk about pirates and we're in the Caribbean, just on those Caribbean cruises. Princess is the biggest cruise line going. I didn't know that. And the Regal Princess, the flagship that I was on, I was on there for a week. I didn't see half of it, but spectacular, colossal. All the worker bees were nice. Even, even as they kept contacting us were nice. The passengers were nice. Uh, I'm glad I got the job. Wow. Fantastic. That's again, in the right place at the right time. No, absolutely. And yeah. They even, when they put the, my pay in my bank, they even threw in an extra $1,000. Woo oh, man. Now, you that can't beat that. Yeah, I said, where were you guys 40 years ago when I needed you? <laughs> right. I know, huh? I'm well, sure there were times when you had to scrape to get a couple of dollars just to get out to the site, but uh, like you that said. That was this morning, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all good. Yeah, I mean, man, just the the wealth of experiences you've had and being uh, lucky enough to be in the right place at the right times like that, hopefully fate continues to shine upon you. Uh, that's good, because I can use it. <laughs> right. Uh, with us running over the way we have, I think maybe, maybe we need to... Uh, get Carl back again sometime and continue this. What do you think, I, Leighton? I, sec I second that. <laughs> and I'd be I'm, happy to. It's and fun. I'm pretty sure the listeners would, too. Yeah, maybe we can be on time next time, huh? We won't have to have Carl wait too long. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I was just sitting there having some rum. That's okay. <laughs> it all works, right? Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like this Skype thing. Because, you know, uh I'm like, uh, I've got my nice Spanish main shirt on, I, but there's I nothing see it. down below. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, we've got a friend of ours tuning in from, well, he's from Wisconsin and tuning in from Fort Pierce, Florida, that uh, we like to, to get on Skype every now and then and few, uh, share a few uh, social drinks. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> nothing wrong with that at all. Uh is there anything you would like to add to this, Leighton, before we think about rolling out? Well, actually, I just want to thank Carl uh, for coming on and uh, being patient with us this evening. And I uh, would love to have him back and uh, looking forward to picking up from where we left off tonight. That's right. good. You guys let me know when. And uh, uh, anything that you would like to add, Carl? Um, well, I... I snuck in my dive trips and the books, uh, so That's I'm okay. pretty good there. Uh, Go ahead, do the, tell the folks where the book is again, and uh, maybe one more time, and, and the price, and how they yeah, can get in touch with you. 
the best one now because it's just at the printers and I'll have them. He promised me a big delivery on February 15th, but I'm taking advance orders. But just shoot it to me on email right now, uh, Carl. I mean, I'm Captain Fizz at yahoo.com. C A P T A I N F F I Z Z, like you shake a bottle. And I'll give you the de- right book in the heading because I get hundreds of emails a day. But if it says book, I'll open it right up. I'm sure and, you do. Yeah. And any of you divers or snorkelers want to go out on the 1733 fleet, couple of wreck sites, uh, we're doing that trip too. And you can email me for information because we just did the deal with the dive shop. Uh, awesome. A seminar in the morning. Two tank dive in the afternoon. We were going to charge two ninety five, but we're we're putting that off until we see how successful. One hundred ninety five bucks for the whole day. Nice, that's perfect. That's perfect. And they get to dive with a real treasure hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's and, worth it right there. Absolutely. And, and when that's we get well back, there's a bar just two doors down. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Got to know your the, local watering hole. That's I right. know all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I and much like Leighton said, myself too, I would like to uh, personally thank you for taking the time to be on. And it has just been an absolute pleasure. And we look forward to having you back again. Thank you. I all appreciate right. it. For everyone else. We appreciate you for standing by through the technical glitch that we had this evening and appreciate everyone for tuning in. If you liked and enjoyed the show, you know, throw us some thumbs, uh, give us some stars, share the love, leave a comment, let us know. Uh, and we will definitely get Fizz back because you, for the career that he has had, in treasure hunting, you just can't cover it in one show. There is absolutely no way. So we will have him back. We appreciate everyone for tuning in, but it's about time to roll out. So hang in there with me, guys, and we'll get out of here. All right. Keep it low and slow. We'll see you next week, folks. Uh, actually, next week we'll be back with Mr. Rob Hilt, I do believe. That's correct. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you next week. Mm-hmm.